Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we'll be talking about directly impacting the industrial skills gap. And I brought in an expert. I brought in Jeremiah Williams, who is di- the Director of Integrated Machining Technology at Danville Community College. So welcome, Jeremiah. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. Oh, I'm very excited to have you, sir. Looking forward to this conversation and uh, learning about you and the program there at DCC. I happen to know uh, a gentleman that goes there, and he connected us. So, so Neil, I know you're listening. Thank you for the connection, my friend. Uh, but, but Jeremiah, maybe give us some introduction to what you're building there and the impact that 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 it is having directly on that declining skills gap. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just just a quick once over again. You know, my name is Jeremiah Williams. I am the Director of our Integrated Machining Program here at Danville Community College, which is housed on the campus for the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research. Um, there is a major um, skills gap, and, and here in Danville, you know, our, our goal is to, you know, try to close that and cover as many bases as we can. So if we start from the top and work down and, and look at some of the programs that we have to offer. You know, we have our third year capstone integrated machining program, which is designed to provide a very advanced, very high level um, engineering level technician to um, advanced manufacturers. Um, And then we have our two year precision machining program, which is the goal of that program is to provide a uh, intermediate to high level uh, machinist to again to advanced manufacturers. Um, and then we have our uh, 16-week accelerated training program known as ATDM. Um, the, the goal of that program is to, you know, take people who are coming straight out of the military or already working for defense manufacturers. Um, but we're pulling these people from all across the country um, and putting them through a, a 16-week long accelerated training program. And the concepts that we're covering through that program is either uh, precision machining, welding, metrology, and additive manufacturing. Okay. I mean, it sounds like it's three very different type of programs, but address the, so many different problems uh, in, in, in those ways. Now, for your advanced, that three-year program, do they, I'm assuming, do they go through that two-year first and that's that's the, the next level of that? Or do you, can you come straight to that to that third year and, and jump in? They do. So a majority uh, of our students are graduates of a two year precision machining program or equivalent. Uh, we, we do require that they have, you know, a pretty solid foundation in machining prior to coming into this program. Um, we, we don't have very many introductory courses, so everything mm-hmm. is, you know, pretty much hit the ground running from day one. Right. I, I, I... I love it. I mean, it sounds like and that 16 week program says so you mentioned military. So is that a focus for that program that like help a military transition to industrial world? Yeah. So that, that was the original intended purpose of that program. Um, it's, it's actually fa- funded by the Department of Defense. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, we, we're seeing, uh, you know, a lot of people, like I said earlier, that are coming straight from the military or people who are currently working for defense manufacturers. and This short term training is a great way for them to step out of the workplace, come here and and just elevate their skills to to the next level and go straight back into their existing employer and and do, you know, that much more for them. Yeah. And for our listeners out there who who may not know where Danville is, so that's in Virginia. It's right on the line. I I, kind of put you guys around at Lynchburg, Greensboro. You can tap into that Roanoke market. So that's mm-hmm. serving that southeastern Virginia area is where Danville Community College. But to your point, Jeremiah, you have people coming from all over uh, to get into your program. That's why I wanted to have you on the show because, you, you know, you, you have such a draw because you're feeling a, re- a very important need out there. And I'm just curious, when you were developing this program, I know you, you had a very hands-on approach to the program development yourself mm-hmm. so far as impacting multiple different industries. So what was that process like as you, as you were building this thing out? Um, so, you know, the, the curriculum development process for this program, um, it's, we are very heavily focused on continuous improvement. So um, I think my answer to that question would be, 
you know, the curriculum is is not completely developed and it, and it never will be because uh-huh. industry is, is, is always training uh, and moving forward. So, you know, for us, the goal is to to keep up with that curve of, you know, forever changing technology. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, up front, you know, we relied very heavily on our industry partners um, and, and we, we stay in constant, very close contact with them to see what are their needs? You know, what are the key core competencies that th- these guys should be learning as they you know go through their education and, and enter into the workforce? Right. Well, I mean, just kind of, you know, pull on that industry partner area a little bit that you just talked about. So, I mean, what, what do those partners, you know, what are they looking for when they come to you? Uh, and what does that engagement look like? I mean, how are you guys working with them to make sure you're producing, I guess, the skill sets that they need that's going to make an impact on their production floor? So from an industry partner standpoint, uh, you know, we refer to that as our advisory committee. Um, and, and we, like I said earlier, we stay in very close contact with them. And we, we have meetings every year where we give them an opportunity to sit down and listen to us. And we, we will basically go th- through with them everything that we're currently teaching, the, the major core competencies that we're trying to cover with these students. And, and then we open the floor up to them. And give them the opportunity to tell us, you know, this is some new emerging technology that, that we're implementing in our facility. And so if you guys can find somewhere to to incorporate this into your, into your curriculum, um, yeah. then it would better serve us. And so we then take that information and we'll sit down and we'll look at some of the competencies that we were teaching. They're maybe not as relevant anymore. And we'll pull that information from the curriculum to make room for new. Um, You know, as we all know, you know, change is is inevitable. And so, you know, there's Mm -hmm. some things that, you know, 10 years ago were a necessity. And today, you know, that they're not nearly as important. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine, too, with with the technology changing and software. I mean, it's it's, it's like you said, that constant evolution and. I am curious about the training, you know, if we can just peel back that a little bit, what, you know, what does that actually look like and consist of? And maybe what's been some of the more challenging areas if you, as you've worked with your partners out there to implement it to the curriculum, because you know, those, those needs are changing so fast. So can you give us a little more insight to, you know, when you enter maybe a two year or, or that third year program, what does it actually look like? Yep. So we, we can kind of go through the, the full three year program, uh, just okay. kind of 50,000 foot view of it. Um, so um, a student that's coming into our two year precision machining program, um, they're going to start off with uh, an introduction to to manual machining. It's going to be you know a good opportunity for them to, you know, understand, you know, how to properly, you know, apply a cutter and, and load fixturing and set that stuff up and, and get a feel for, you know, what does it mean when a cutter is doing what it should be doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, throughout that process, they're going to be learning about tooling geometries and fixturing, um, you know, all their speeds and feeds, just the, the basic machining fundamentals. Um, that is then going to progress into CNC, uh, where they're going to begin with um, a summer semester that covers CNC lathes and programming as they move into their second year. Um, they will start to take a deeper dive into CAD CAM and CNC milling. And then by their final semester, um, a majority of their projects are going to require the use of heat treating processes, grinding, CNC milling, CNC turning, uh, blueprint reading, all, all of the, the, the basic like I said, machining fundamentals that are necessary. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so. A graduate from that program then has the opportunity to either A, enter the workforce or B, continue their education to our third year integrated machining program. And if the, uh, they choose to come here, um, day one, we will start covering uh, advanced fundamentals of CAD CAM. So from day one, we'll get into surface modeling, T splines, dealing with meshes, things of that nature. Um, and then on the CAM side, um, we start off with 3D milling, 3 plus 2 machining, simultaneous 5 axis, uh, dual spindle turning. And following that class, they will then go through what we refer to as um, multi axis machine tool setup. So it's, it's one thing for somebody to be able to go out to a machine 
and understand how to set a tool offset, a work offset, and load a program and make a part. Um, we prefer for the students to understand the part entirely. So they can go out there, they can calibrate it, they can set it up from scratch without any assistance from anybody, including the machine manufacturer, and be able to troubleshoot through their own problems. So we'll cover all of that information from start to finish. Uh, we then get into um, advanced tooling applications. So um, if you ask me my personal opinion, this is a, a serious need for industry. You know, if you go into a, a lot of shops across America, you know, there, there's cutting um, tool paths that are being applied that maybe are, are not as as optimized as they should be. And, and the goal for these manufacturers at the end of the day is to be profitable. Right. Um, and so, you know, applying these cutters correctly and, and making the proper tooling selection up front is a critical part of the process. So we will take the tooling side of things and, and break it down to a very, very scientific level and, and teach these guys, how do you correctly tool up a job and how do you properly apply these cutters to remove material using the most effective processes? Yeah. Um, following that, we will then cover um, CNC grinding, both surface, um, ID, OD, and face grinding. Um, and then we get into EDM machining on the wire and sinker side of things. Um, after that, we cover CMM machines. So we will take them through uh, M Cosmos C1 and C2. So a graduate of this program will have the fundamental skills to be able to program, set up, and operate a CMM machine both off of a blueprint and off of a 3D model. Um, after that, we get into uh, macro programming. So this is another um, major need for industry, in my opinion, is nowadays, you know, if you if you purchase um, a piece of CNC equipment, it's going to come with probing. And, and a lot of manufacturers are under utilizing that equipment and, and it can be used for, you know, in-process inspection, post-process inspection, um, error reporting. They can use it to to catch mistakes before the component ever leaves the machine where they would have an opportunity to either fix, you know, an individual component or correct the process on the fly so that they never even make scrap parts. Right. Um, and so we'll take them through how do you write and create your own macro programming logic using, you know, if-then statements, basic mathematical equations. Um, and then outputting that data to SPC softwares and understanding how do I read this data and interpret it in a way that I understand how to control the process. Yeah. Um, so after that first semester uh, of covering the, all of these individual, more advanced concepts, we'll move into a, a spring semester. And that's going to be their first real opportunity to take this information and put it all together. So. We'll go into a, a four week class that we refer to as flow self setup. I will provide a folder that has models, assemblies, one off parts, and I will also provide quantities for each one of these and, and you know, critical tolerances that they have to meet. And so the class will take that information and as a team, they will sit down and come up with all of the tooling required to produce these components. Uh, they will design all the fixtures the inspection routines, serialization processes so that they can track each part individually and go back to it and, and refer to, you know, what happened to this part throughout the process. Um, and then we move into a six week live production. So all of that information that they have put together and tested over the previous four weeks, is going to be their opportunity to put it to the test. And so they will go into a six week live production Everybody in the shop will have a specific job role and they will rotate through these job roles. So you may see somebody that's acting as production leader. And that's a really good opportunity for someone to hone their leadership skills. Um, and they also get to see what does it actually mean to, to be a leader. And so their key responsibilities are going to be to collaborate with everybody in the shop and, and make sure that all of their gates are being met. And if they're not, then pulling together the correct team of people, initiating these conversations to correct, you know, whatever the problem may be that they're experiencing. And on the other side of that coin, you may be lathe operator. 
And, you know, that's a, that's also a necessary job function for, for many manufacturers. And so the person that's at that piece of equipment, their responsibility is to just be productive. And if they come across any issues or problems, that person has the necessary skills to correct them themselves, but they have to treat it as if their job function is lathe operator. So they're going to have to get up with their programmer, for example, and it gets added to a list of action items. And that programmer is then going to prioritize all of the things that are being thrown at them and determine what issue is more pressing than another. And they're going to slowly start chipping away at that. and. Throughout this entire process, everybody in the shop is going to be focused very heavily on communication and continuous improvement. So even when things seem to be running smoothly, no problems, there's still always something that you can do better. And so if they find something, they're going to note this, record it, implement a fix, and analyze the results of that and see if it was successful, unsuccessful. Um, And at the end of this entire assignment, they will take all of this data that they have collected, you know, not only the success of these processes from a, you know, good part, bad part ratio to all of these continuous improvement measures. You know, why did you make certain decisions along the way? You know, why did you take the shop and lay it out in this order and decide to produce parts this way versus another? And collectively as a group, they will present that to myself. As, as well as industry leaders that will come in and, and listen to this information. And then they'll also be graded on a individual level as to right. you know, how well was their individual performance. Wow. I mean, so it sounds like tons of hard skills that obviously they're learning, but yeah. also you incorporating a lot of soft skills that get, that get dismissed, but that, the, the ability to run the shop and be a, be a sound like a foreman type role all the way down to an operator type role. That that's a, you're learning soft skills along all the way there. Yep. So I I, I forgot to mention that. Um, so throughout <laughs> these courses, um, we will also cover focus on their soft skills very heavily. So early on, they go through a, a course in Lean Six Sigma, and they will actually get a yellow belt certification from that. Oh, nice. Um, and then moving further into the curriculum, we have a course that we refer to as uh, Crucial Conversations, and That'll be our opportunity to really hone their leadership skills and their ability to communicate in a team environment. Because most of these guys and girls, they're coming from programs where you're handed a blueprint, you produce a part, and you're graded solely off of your individual performance. And and honestly, it's expected that you do work alone because they don't want any type of academic dishonesty going on there. Right. Um, But when they come here, we try to focus very heavily on those high performance culture, team style environments. And so it's important that we teach them how do you um, properly communicate, even when it's a conversation that maybe you don't want to have. How do you you manage your emotions and successfully get your point across? That's right. I mean, because that, that, that's that's the reality of the world they're going to be going, entering into, particularly in the industrial manufacturing space. And mm-hmm. I'm curious, too. So you mentioned there's a lot. It sounds like, first of all, you're drinking from a fire hose if you enter this program, but it's a yes. lot. It's a lot to, to to take in. So if you if you found something that you're interested in there um, and you're a listener, go back and, and just listen to that whole section again, because it was a lot to unpack. I'm curious, though, is it the the, the mix of lab versus well, when I say lab, I mean actual machine time versus the classroom time. Is it he- more heavy on the classroom at the beginning and then you start working your way to- towards the, to the equipment or is it a good mix all the way? So that that's actually a really good question. Um, our two-year program, if you go online and, and you look up the curriculum for that, you will notice that it's a, di- a diploma program. Okay. Um, the reason for that is because you can actually teach more credits in a diploma than you can with an associate's degree, which allows us to weigh that program heavily on the lab side okay. and, and eliminate some of the less necessary um, gen edu- general education classes. Right. So the students that go through a two year program, they're typically completing 80 to 90 credit hours of education. 
Mm-hmm. And a good majority of that is spent actually at the machine and gaining experience. When they come into our third year capstone program, that is going to be their opportunity to to get an associate's degree. So we take many a lot of the credits that they've completed in the two year and we um, count that towards an associate. So while they're here in our capstone program, they will actually complete uh, 39 credit hours. Uh, of education okay. and couple that with the courses that they took in the two-year program. They're now sitting on several industry certifications, a diploma and an associate's degree. And and many of these guys and girls are two years out of high school. Yeah. At that level of education. That's incredible. I, I'm curious too, as, as you've built this program out and you've seen graduates come through, what have been some of the better success stories that you've, that you've seen so far as impacting those lives directly? Uh, so there, there, there's there been a lot of them. Um, but I would say that the, the number one most satisfying success stories that, that we have are the people that graduate from this program and within a very short period of time have stepped back into an educational role or are back working for the college itself because these individuals have, have graduated and they have such a high level of skill for us, you know, that that's the name of our game is we're trying to teach, um, you know, boys and girls to a level where they are considered, in my book, um, an elite machinist. Right. And so when you have these graduates that just excel, the only thing you want to do is figure out a way to bring them back into it and share their knowledge back with someone else and have an opportunity to replicate their own skills numerous times over. Um, right. So. A good majority of the schools that are in our area, uh, the instructors in those programs are graduates of this third year capstone program. So, you know, you look at Danville Community College, the instructor for the additive program in ATDM is a graduate of this program. Um, The technical program manager for ATDM is a graduate of this IMT program. Um, Our trainer of specialized education. Same thing. Um, You go out to Patrick Henry Community College and the instructor for that program is a graduate of IMT. And you go as far as Withville Community College, which is about two and a half hours from here. The uh, lead instructor for that program is a graduate. And then their instructor in their high school program, again, a graduate of this program. So to on, on the educational side of things, to see that these graduates have so much skill that everybody wants to capture them and, and use their skills and replicate it over and over and over. That That's that's a huge win in our book. But from yeah. uh, a, a private side of things, you know, we've had people just last year, we had 19 individuals that graduated. Um, one of those gentlemen is now an applications engineer for Hermley. Uh, another one is an applications engineer for Mazak. Um, another gentleman went to work for a company in Charlottesville that was trying to move their supply chain from China to America. And the gentleman that owns that company, um, his goal was to, you know, be his own producer. So he purchased, you know, a lot of equipment, made a heavy investment up front. And the first person that he hired to get all of this off the ground was a graduate out of this program. Man, that success story after success story. That is wonderful. And thank you for sharing that. And so I'm curious now, too, you just, you, you've shared so much around this program, the impact that it's making. We have a lot of listeners out there who, who maybe have young ones at home. And mm-hmm. if you had to give those those listening a message to encourage them to just have the conversation with the next generation, to look at it like an industrial trades differently and skills like you're teaching differently, because sometimes, man, you know, there's a stigma out there. It can be. We're trying to, to debunk that, particularly when it comes to manufacturing oh, yeah. and machining. So what would be a message that you'd like to, to share to those parents listening or maybe even that, that high schooler who, who if they happen to, to tune into this podcast, mm-hmm. they're, they're listening to this message? Um, I, I would first start off by saying that um, there's a reason that, it, that it's referred to as advanced manufacturing. You know, I, I think a lot of people have this. Um, this idea in their head where, you know, if you go into manufacturing, it means that you're going to be standing on 
an assembly line somewhere and and getting greasy and dirty and grimy and, and sweaty all day and, and working for a very low wage. And the technology in manufacturing has progressed to the point where it requires a very, very, very highly skilled individual and manufacturers are willing to pay a lot for those skills. Um, you know, if, if you look at just my personal story alone, you know, I graduated from Danville Community College uh, the, through their two year precision machining program. And day one after I graduated, I started working for Rolls Royce. Uh, we produced civil aerospace engines. And, and through that opportunity, I was able to to travel all over the world. I've been to several countries, uh, you know, Germany, Europe, Scotland, Switzerland, and, and so on. And so that's just an amazing experience. And, you know, I like to consider that, say that I've been, you know, very successful and I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and, and so for, you know, the parents or students that are out there that are listening to this, um, I, you know, it's well worth sitting down and doing your homework and reaching out to, you know, the schools in your area or, you know, go online and, and see and look at what is industry actually doing and the skill sets that are required. Um, and, and you'll find that there are a, a lot of things that, that carry over. So uh, one of the funny things that we see is the graduates that we have that excel very, very heavily on the CAD CAM side of things typically are very computer oriented people, uh, you know, guys that they, they enjoy, you know, sitting down at night and, and, you know, playing video games and doing stuff like that. And they come in right. and they're already really, really good with softwares in general. And they don't realize that they are actually in some ways building a skill set that people are willing to pay a tremendous amount of money for when you, you know, convert that to, CAD CAM and, and CNC programming and things like that. Right. Right. Great. I love the message there, Jeremiah. So, I mean, this has been very impactful today. I love what you got, you all are doing at Danville Community College, the impact you're having. We call it Eco Ask Why. We always wrap up with the why. So if somebody was to come, comes up to you and says, you know, why is the work you're doing important to the future of manufacturing? What are you going to tell them? Uh, manufacturing is at the end of the day, it's, it's what drives America. And, and if you want to put a very real spin on this, um, the, the, the U S government has recognized that the, um, the average age in today's manufacturing workforce, it has been classified as a national security threat. And so mm -hmm. cities and towns like all across America are, are starting to, to double down very heavily on, uh, advanced manufacturing training. And so this is an extremely lucrative field to go into with extremely high paying wages. And, and it's very satisfying at the end of the day. And to be honest, it, the, the sky is the limit for people that are entering into this career field. Um, I tell all the students here, um, this is exactly what you make it. If you want the most out of it, then you will get the most out of it, both professionally and personally. Yes. Absolutely love it. So where should people go to learn more about you or the program? Uh, any, any links you'd like to give a, a, a shout out to for our listeners? Uh, yeah, so um, there's going to be some information that is on the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research's website, as well as Danville Community College's website. Okay. And for your listeners out there, we'll make sure that's synced up in the show notes. So go there. You'll have those links and connect directly, learn more, highly encourage you all to, to share this out as, as well with, with others because these types of conversations are tons of information that you shared, uh, Jeremiah. So thank you so much for your time today on Eco Ask Why. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. That was a wonderful conversation with Jeremiah. Now, I know there was a lot of information. He really unpacked the whole area, those, those programs in detail. So I want to encourage you, seriously, go check out the show notes. We'll have links there so you can go check out the programs and, and, and see more, more of that line by line, what those programs can consist of. Because if it sounds interesting to you, you really take, need to take some time to evaluate it. I personally know someone that moved from Florida to Danville, Virginia, just because this program checked their boxes. And you know what? They're in that third, that third year program that Jeremiah was talking about. And when he finishes, He's basically, he's going to be set up to work wherever he wants. 
And these are skills that are transferable wherever you live. You want to work in Hawaii? They need machinists. West Coast, East Coast, other countries, wherever you go, these skill sets, they, they matter. We need to be to uh, cheering people on to pursue these paths. And I just, for people like Jeremiah, the programs that they're building like this, what an impact it can have. So uh, hopefully that made a, a, a really impact on you directly as a listener. But if it did, I encourage you to share this episode. This is one that we need to get out, particularly to the younger generation. Share it with sons, daughters, granddaughters, grand, grandsons, uh, parents. Get it out there so they can hear this type of message because so many of us, we just don't, we don't even know about these paths that exist. Jeremiah, the things he's doing at DCC and programs like this all over the country, they have a need and this can impact manufacturing greatly. And again, it's, it's not dark, dangerous, and dirty. It's far from that. There's a, a tremendous, tremendously impactful path that lies ahead for the future machinists of the world. So thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. We would ask you to give us a rating and review. That makes all the big difference. Just click that five-star rating, write a review. That'd be wonderful. Uh, again, thank you. I know there's a lot of, of other podcasts out there for taking the time with us today. I hopefully this brought you value. And remember... Keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.